You're listening to The Marketing Trench, the official podcast where no real estate professional gets left behind in the pursuit of building a business they can be proud of. A podcast designed to help you build the foundation of a powerful real estate career. Join real estate experts Ricardo Bueno, Marketing Technology Director at West, Dustin Stevie, CEO of Lighthouse Escrow, and Scott Shang, partner at Bywise Mortgage and founder of Find My Way Home, as they bring you real-world strategies, marketing ideas, and solutions straight from the trench. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Marketing <laughs> Trench Podcast. Now a proud member of Real Disrupt, the Real Disrupt Podcast Collaborative. We're excited to say that we have joined with that awesome group and you can see more of their podcast at realdisrupt.com. Hey guys, good to see you. How's it going? Awesome. <laughs> Oh, you're talking. About, <laughs> I thought you were talking to the vast audience that we have. Tuning in. <laughs> You're good, man. Oh. Doing good. I, I gotta. I'm telling you this. Um, this whole. Uh, this is this whole recluse thing. This really suits me. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know who it doesn't suit. I'm enjoying myself. There. It's uh, it's not suiting Sasquatch very well. Uh, with their <laughs> Superman hat. <laughs> Oh my gosh. What is Sasquatch. happening? <laughs> you did not just go there. <laughs> oh god. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's hurting. Yeah, that's me. a little I, scary. I itch for uh I itch for, for going out and doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to do something about that. <laughs> hey, so today so we were we, we were saying before we were we were saying before we went out really funny when I do these Zoom calls with friends. I can see which one of my friends have a spouse as a hairdresser or a barber because they like they look very well kempt. <laughs> you know, I'm working on my uh, Boris Johnson mop over here, and I'm doing a real good job of it. Yeah, Ashley is definitely not a uh, barber. No. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. And Ricardo doesn't know how to use a razor. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what the hell are we doing? Now? Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the subject of working on your business during COVID. And uh, we've got some suggestions, but we wanted to actually do a live Q&A since we're streaming this today on uh, our various Facebook groups and uh, profiles. We wanted to open up the conversation to anyone who's listening. And actually, we can also put the comments here on the screen, <laughs> which I'm going to do now. Um, so we've got Julie saying hello, good morning. <laughs> Christy saying TGIF, no kidding, TGIF indeed. Um, <laughs> so we are going to be talking today about how to do your business in COVID. We're going to be putting your comments up on the screen like we just did. Uh, if you have some questions for us, we're going to kick this thing off though with some ideas that we had sort of collaborated on just internally. Um, and uh, Ricardo, why don't you present us? You've been talking with a lot of uh, different people in the industry. You're still doing meetings. You're doing them virtually yeah. um, and remotely. So why don't you give us just a sense of a couple of ideas of what you've been implementing here as you're encouraging people to do their business? So, uh, so I hear, I feel like, I feel like there's, t I'm, I'm experiencing two sides of this. Um, right now we're spending a lot of time with agents. Like I have one agent who's just, things haven't slowed down. It's been quite the opposite. So she has 12 escrows that she's juggling right now. That's, that's a lot. She's having a lot of conversations and, and she's playing therapist. She's playing psychiatrist. She's playing realtor. She's playing, she, she's wearing all these different hats. And while all of that is going on, she's also kind of taking it upon herself to, you know, now's a really good time for me to get a handle of my marketing because it's something that I've been putting off and I've been making excuses because you know, you get busy. And so I just, I recognize that I can't continue to put it off and all of this is going to be over soon. I want to come out of the gates, like prepared, roaring and ready to go. I don't want to have excuses, you know, six months down the line as to why I didn't take care of X, Y, and Z in my business uh, last year or, or whatever, a few months ago. Um, and then on the other oh, end, she, you, huh? No, I was just going to say, I really want to know what kind of things, I don't know if we can dive that um but if there's any any realtors out there i would love to hear what kind of thing she's doing well and then so, the second comment is so only 12 listings is giving her time to now focus on her business <laughs> that's a little scary <laughs> no but but yeah, it's things like, are light right now yeah things are light right now <laughs> 
it's like it i don't know to me what that says is like it's focused determination and it's all like mindset right i have other people yeah. who are panicking and you know oh my gosh what do i do and so what it says it just speaks to the fact that if you don't have systems if you don't have process then you're always going to feel like like you go through your day, you do all of this stuff, you, you do all of these actions, you might share some stuff on social and you feel like, oh my gosh, I've been super efficient in my business, um, but you're still chasing deal after deal after deal. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between like being efficient and being effective. A lot of people mm -hmm. feel like they're being super efficient, but when you take a step back and you look at the things that they're doing, they're not, very, they're not being very effective. So yeah. you have to be effective first, and, and if you're going to, you know, go about being efficient in your business. And so, I don't know. I, I think that's what kind well, of, I, for me, go ahead. I to say effective sometimes implies that you're the best person for the job, right? So, so it being, so, in maybe I'm reading this wrong, um, but where a lot of people get caught up is they're highly effective. They're highly competent and they're highly effective. And so they don't delegate. So they're super busy all the time because they're super efficient and every person they contact, they have a really high closing ratio. Um, but efficient is something completely different. Efficient is all of that works when you're in the Bahamas. <laughs> right. So that's why that's how I compare the difference between efficient and, and, and effective. I mean, in, in a, in a, very broad sense. Yeah. And so, you know, where this agent is right now is, you know, it's funny, she's delegating all of these different things. We're uh, migrating her website from, I forget what she's currently on, over to Chime because she runs uh, a small team. I think Chime for the price is, you know, you get the power of a boomtown for a fraction of the cost. It has a great CRM, it has a great front facing website. Um, it's just a, it, I think it's a powerful platform. So we're, we're migrating all of her content there. She's using constant contact and, uh, she has a database of, I think upwards of 20,000. Uh, that's very, uh, she emails once or twice a month. I forget. Anyway, that's a good source of referral business for her. So that's working great. Um, and then we're delegating, she has a social media manager who's working on creating content and scheduling that content for the next 30 and 60 days. Um, and then, you know, again, she's just delegating all of these different things or areas of her business so that it's just a well oiled machine that just works, right? Um, and so I guess to, that's what kind of... <clears throat> was she not doing say that, that again? To, was, she not, was she not delegating or is this like a epiphany for her? Where she said, oh, uh, "I need to, I need to get people to do all this stuff for me." It's, it's. Because I want to grow. It's. I want to grow my team, and my team hasn't been adopting these tools, and I need to kind of wrangle the herd so that they can be more effective. And and that's yeah. the case. That's the case. I feel like with most most brokers, you you have um, training and adoption is is a whole like job in and of itself. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's, it's unique to find uh, somebody who's just highly motivated out of the gate and is just going to be on fire right out of the gate. I think a lot of the times we have to, we have to work for that, or you have to, you have to train that and instill that upon your agents. And it's a daily, it's a daily thing. So oh, yeah. interesting. Cause this actually ties into a comment that Scott had made uh, a couple podcasts ago, a couple of weeks ago, where he was talking about how this is a really good time to do things that require a lot of brain juice. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, I think that Ricardo, this is your point too, right? The stuff that requires a lot of training and adoption and all that sort of thing, right? Like that's, uh, that is time consuming the sort of thing you really don't want to make time for when you're having to go do showings or you're having to answer client emails or phone calls, or there's some other fire in an escrow or something that needs to get put out. Um, you know, doing trading and adoption is, is tedious and it's time consuming, but you've got time right now. So yeah. So in terms of growing your business and things you can be working on right now, maybe identify those couple of things you've been kicking down the road that do take time and attention and some brain juice and focus on those right now. Well, and I think a part of this also is finding the time to train people to do these things for you. And potentially, this is also a really good time for that. You know, you can go, you can say here, here's your, because, you know, when I, when I 
started getting used to delegating, the first step of delegating is you have to think it out. You have to think the entire process out, which makes you really kind of circle the entire, figure out the entire thing, document it, then send it over to them and then explain it to them. Anybody that's ever used VAs out there, virtual assistants, overseas or anything, you've done this before. So you know that. Um, but this is a really good opportunity because when we're in our offices and we're in the, the, the heat, of, of the, the mix of things. Sometimes you don't have the time to do that, but it's pretty easy right now at almost any time, jump on a Zoom call with somebody for two hours and say, hey, I want you to tackle this. I want you to learn this process since we're all stuck at home. So what do you, what do you say to anybody who hasn't set that stuff up? What do you say to right? people that, that struggle with delegation because they want it to be perfect and they feel like, like I'm the only one that can do this. And so I don't want to outsource it because that's a problem too. And I talked about that, I think with um, Andrew Pollack, who uh, I interviewed for an episode. Yeah. We were the talking about, project. yeah, we were talking about how a lot of agents don't want to outsource the the calling of the leads. They don't want to outsource the follow-up to a company like Verse. But the reality is a lot of agents aren't trained to call leads and they feel yeah. like they're the only ones that could do it right or they, they're the only ones that could do it well. But the reality is they don't. And Verse is super effective, in fact, highly effective at what they do. So <laughs> what do you say to somebody? Like, how do you how do you get snap out of that perfectionist mindset? You know what I always found interesting? Because Josh and I are both kind of it, it's I, I've I've been practicing delegating for a long time. So I'm getting a lot more comfortable with it. Um but there's a really interesting thing that happens when you go on vacation. And, and I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this, but if like, if you go on vacation, have you ever noticed like your office is twice as productive as it is when you're there? <laughs> I, I Seriously, I can't say how many times I've said, you know what, I've got to not be in the office more often. So like if that's ever happened <laughs> to, to you before, then there's an opportunity there for you to delegate. And I, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a little bit of a mindset too. Uh, you know, Ricardo, it, it's you. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent right, and you defining what is the perfect way to do this doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way to do it. It's the way that you think it needs to be done. And what I found time and time again is when you stuff over to people, especially people that you trust they usually end up doing a better job of it than you do because you're thinking of 19 other things and you're just trying to get it done. And it's just not as it, it, it's just not the, it's just not the same. It, you have to practice. It, that's a really good question because it's, it's fundamental. And I think it's this, it's the same type of question or the same type of uh, mindset as, um, or it's the same type of thing as developing a mindset, establishing a mindset. So what are you doing during these times, right? So th if you're panicking, you're not thinking about delegating. You're not thinking about growing, but it's literally a decision. It's yeah. a choice. So, so Mike Price just commented something. I think it's really powerful. And that he said, that's why you have to let people own what they have delegated to them. And I think that's exactly mm -hmm. right. I mean, especially during this time, the, the temptation can be to try and grab control, right? The world's spinning out of control. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. that are out of your control that don't normally feel like they're out of your control, like when you can go grocery shopping and what you can buy. Mm -hmm. And so the temptation that we all have is to try and seize that power and, and be like, all right, I need to manage my environment. And that can also mean that anything you've previously assigned to somebody, you want to maybe take that back. And now is not the time to do that. Now is the time to really try and let them run with it. And, you know, to the degree that, that, you know, I'd be interested to know how you guys lead on this. But for me internally, you know, I give people things, I delegate things and they come back with, with stuff and it's not what I want. Um, at least it's not with what's inside of my head. And it took me a long time to realize that that's okay. Cause that's part of the process, right? Like sometimes you need to let people just do the best that they can do. And then you come in and you say, man, that's that's really great. Like that was a really good start. I, I think you nailed the following couple of things that you legitimately think they nailed. And then, you know, give them a couple of points of feedback, right? It's like, you know, what if you look at this or I have a question about why you chose to do that? Can you explain it to me? 
guys, what do you think? What, what, what do you think in this time about, you know, how do you, how do you let people own what you've delegated to them without stepping on them and without, you know, um, trying to seize that power back? It's give, it's giving creative. I, I, I don't delegate a lot of things. I don't feel like, um, I have a good working relationship with, with some of the people I do go out in the field with. Um, but it's, it's having trust and giving some creative control, right. To, to the person that you're, that you're working with. Um, and I, I think that's just an ongoing, ongoing working thing. How about you? No, it, it, no, it is. It's, it, that's a hundred percent of what it is. And, and you're right, Dustin, sometimes you, you delegate something and here's the worst part about it is you delegate and then you hear that. I mean, interacting with somebody and you're like, Oh my God, that's not the way that I would do it. And then the next thing you know, you got a five-star review coming in. Right. And you're like, Oh, maybe, maybe my way wasn't the perfect way. The, the, the bottom line is you, you drive the, you drive the level of service and you drive the culture from the top down. And so your interaction and the way that you support and like what, what Mike, uh, what Mike says um, about trusting them, uh, to do what's delegated to them, just give them that freedom and, and let them do that. And it, it, it's funny because by training them, you're training yourself to let go. And, and that's really, and that's really what this is. And I'll be honest with you, the, what, the way that we found out, and I'm just thinking about the way that it works in our office and, you know, we're control freaks. We're entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs <laughs> are control freaks by nature. We just are. But but we'll get into a situation where like right now things are going crazy and uh, you know, normally Josh would handle X amount percentage of the workload. Um, but with interest rates going up and down and the market going crazy and not knowing anything, he's so busy putting out fires. We're delegating more and more to everyone else. And, and we've even had these conversations. It's nervous. It's like nerve time. Sometimes you're like, Oh man, I hope they don't screw it up. But consistently, the feedback comes back that it's per- that it was great, because you know what's worse than delegating it to somebody who's not going to be perfect is not getting to it at all, right? Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the absolute worst, and 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 that's and you know we have a uh, one of the people we coach with. Um, he says over and over again, get over yourself. You're just not that important, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so true. And then you. Face palm, and you're like, you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a hundred. That's a hundred percent it. Um, I along these lines too. Then maybe one of the ways that you can be focused on building your business during this time is to focus on how you do mentorship and cultivation of people. Right. So mm-hmm. um, it's not just you know the first tip we had was uh, do things that require a lot of your brain juice, but the second tip here is focus on cultivating your team if you have a team. Figure out one of the things I do is I try and ask my team, what's in your way? I've asked you to do certain things, uh, close a certain number of escrows, uh, you know, have a certain number of contact points with a client throughout the course of the transaction. What is in your way? What prevents you from doing it? And, and, you know, I've got my thoughts on what's preventing them, but I'm regularly surprised to hear what they tell me is preventing them, right? So, for example, stuff I never thought of, like Dustin, I would love to be talking to clients more often, but I'm spending an hour on the phone with US Bank trying to order a payoff. Uh, I started hearing those kinds of comments more often. And I'm like, oh, well, that's potentially a solvable problem. Reached out to our developer and we're working on a solution for a, an AI driven phone bank uh, tool to interact with bank. That's bank. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I mean, who knows if it's going to go anywhere, right? But like, my team, my team, they're not specialists in tech. I know a lot more about tech and my developers know way more about tech. And so just them, me asking them that and them surfacing that was like, oh, that's potentially a solvable problem for, you know, a reasonable fee, especially if it, you know, buys us all this spare time so that now they can go ahead and get on the phone and talk to our clients and just reassure them their escrow is going well. Um, have you guys, have you guys uh, talked to other team members, Ricardo, maybe in your case, it's when you're working with some of the other, uh, you know, some of your coworkers who are helping you set up meetings and stuff. 
where you've run into frustration points where they're not delivering what you hope they delivered. Um, what kind of questions do you guys ask them to figure out like why they aren't achieving and um, you know, how does that help you then help them to achieve? Um, it's, <laughs> you guys it's, hear my dog story? Yeah. <laughs> It's hilarious. <laughs> um, I feel like I feel like we used to. I feel like we used to go into meetings, pitching solutions without stepping back and listening really to what their problem was. Um, I, I feel like now we take a much more. We've gotten a lot better at uh, taking a step back and asking questions to try to get to the root of a problem and then trying to craft a solution around it. Um, so what kind of questions would you ask there? I, I don't know. It depends. It's just tell me about your business and let's deconstruct from there. Like literally everything. What, what, what are you working on in your business right now? What's working? What's not working? Why isn't it working? Why do you feel like it's not working? And it's, it's just asking a lot of questions to really start to paint a picture. Um, like Dustin, you're a systems person. You think in systems. I think, I, I feel like I think the same way. Mm -hmm. I think we all, the three of us do. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just asking business questions to try to get to the root of, of, you know, what's, <laughs> what is kind of broken in this process and how can we make it better? How about for you? You know what I think you is know what's terrifying to me about what you do in one way, Scott, is that you have this mortgage brokerage, right? And you guys are doing all these mm -hmm. loans, but like you are focused on outreach and marketing and not loans. Like you've told me in the past, you're aware of the loan process. You can be involved at any point in the transaction, but you have people who do a lot of the process and loans for you. So you make this promise, this brand promise to your audience, to your consumers, and then you let people deliver on the brand promise. That's terrifying to me. Like, as a, as a to school freak, I'm like terrified. How did, how did you do that? And if I'm somebody who wants to do that, how can I maybe use the time that COVID is giving me to, to put a system like that in place? Well, so so my, our, my office is structured specifically so that Josh manages operations and I handle marketing and advertising and either of us could do either thing. Um, he's better. He's better doing what he does. I've been in the business for 20 years, but we made a conscious decision to delegate those, those things and separate those things out in our business, that part of that development. But mm -hmm. something struck me as we're talking about this, that I wanted to bring up. I want to make sure that it's not lost what we're really talking about here is is everything we've we've always done and the way we've always done it is a habit and what we're doing now is we're forced because our environment has changed so drastically we're forced to do things in a different way and almost all of us i mean we're here talking about working in your business or working on your business right now um but also understand that these things that if you take the time to do them now, you're not going to stop. You're not going to forget this stuff when we go back to normal. You're going to develop a new set pattern of habits that you're going to be able to carry through. The challenge that most of us have is the learning curve. The learning curve, we don't have time to spend enough time to that's, learn something. That's the resistance to where we get competent enough that we can do it without being afraid of, of, of jumping in and trying to learn that new thing. Now you almost don't have any choice. So it's really about making an investment in your business um, and, and really kind of thinking it out because now is the time when you develop those new habits. But for, you know, your comment on our business, uh, Josh and I structured our business and we made a conscious decision that we're going to kind of divide and conquer. Um, but I, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it, it didn't come easy. And, and for a long time, it was just Josh and I started hiring loan officers. And now we have a bunch of loan officers and we have the same kind of thing. I mean, Josh is one of the smartest guys I know. I mean, he knows loans in his sleep. He can, he can unravel any loan product. But I was still nervous about sending people over to him because, 
you know, how we generate a lot of our business is I blog and I write and I do stuff online. So we have people connecting with me because I'm the one information out there. And I'm like, you know what, let me introduce you to my partner. And it was tough at first. I mean, I was, I was nervous and I would follow up and I would, and I would say, how did the conversation go and all this kind of stuff. But pretty soon you just stop, you don't think about it anymore. So is the, so I guess the, the root of the question or, or where we come with this is, is this going to be easy and is it going to feel right? And the answer to both of those is no. <laughs> right. It's not going to feel right. You're going to feel you're going to feel like you're giving stuff up a little bit. It's not going to be easy at all. Um, it's going to be a little treacherous. But then the third question is, is it the right thing to do? Right. And that answer is yes. So Mike Price had a good suggestion here. I'm going to put the comment up. He said um, he's been suggesting to people that now is the time to audit everything and plan as if the business is going to double and know where to grab the resources and do the delegation necessary, audit tech stacks, et cetera. And uh, I think that that's a good example of like a way into this, right? So if, if you're like, hey, look, I wanna build a, I wanna build up my team, I wanna encourage them, I wanna learn, I wanna you know, help them learn how to be responsible leaders in this collaborative effort that we're calling our business. The place to start doing it is to say, where would there be gaps or where would there be holes that need to be filled? Where would there be problems if our business were to double? So COVID's up, you know, and now everyone's back in the world, business doubles. What would you be struggling to do? Maybe that would be a good place to start releasing, uh, or the better word here is delegating out responsibility and figuring out to whom you would delegate that responsibility. I think that's a, that's a great entry point. Yeah, and Ricardo kind of touched on it a little bit earlier when he was talking about that agent that is working on their CRM. They just the CRM. They're going to get that thing set up. Um, and what else were they were they were they working on? But, yeah, but it's these it's, it's the, yeah migrating their migrating their website, working on their CRM, taking care of those things. Uh, you know that's the. the that's the biggest part. The tech stack, you know, Mike talks about auditing the tech stacks. That's that's the big thing, you know. And, and you said it, Dustin. When you're sitting around, where's my pain points? Um, you know, what if you don't think you have any pain points, right? That, that, that's why I like the idea of. That's why I like the idea. I always like to go in everything thinking, well, what if this works? Right. And that's kind of the same concept of, of, of go into this, imagining that your business is going to double on the other side of this, because we haven't talked about this much amongst the three of us. But I am telling you, and, and Josh has been doing videos on this like crazy. Um, it is going to be a really good market for mortgage companies and real estate companies on the other side. Uh, there are going to be opportunities. There are going to be a lot of opportunities. And and right now we have a we have a responsibility to position ourselves to take advantage of those opportunities. And one of the first ways we position ourselves is to get in touch with our clients and reach out to our clients and have these conversations and find out what their needs are and and then start and start implementing these things. I guarantee every single person listening, every single person on Facebook. Um, has something they've had they've wanted to get to that they haven't been able to get to. Hey Ricardo, at a high level on the topic of reaching out to clients and figuring out what they need, do you have any scripts or kind of can you can you model the tone of any emails that somebody might be able to send that wouldn't just be like, "Hey, I'm in the real estate <laughs> business," but like actually comes across as valuable and caring? Um, I had a script. I'll put it in. I'll publish it in the show notes uh, when we when we publish this. But there was a script that. I, I think a company uh, called Viral Marketing wrote. I think we we talked about it in a previous episode, but um, I forget who I was having this conversation with this week, but uh, our messaging needs to come across right now as, you know, showing empathy first and foremost, educating and entertaining. So the content you create needs to fill, uh, fit into one of those buckets. And the first bucket is just high empathy. Because it, you know, people are losing jobs. People are just in all kinds of different um, situations where where the world's being turned upside down. So it's being just highly empathetic first, and then recognizing that um, 
I have some agents that are still like one agent now in Laguna Niguel. Um, he just sold two properties. He's still doing, uh, showing mm -hmm. houses. He's still, you know, he's got a mask on. He, he's practicing uh, all of the right, you know, following the right procedures and being safe and everything. But business hasn't slowed down for him. And so, um, Scott, I see you guys publishing regular uh, market update reports. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think the agents that are doing well are the agents that are still continuing to to operate as if, you know, business is still going forward because the fact of the matter is business is still going forward. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. so I, I, I would just say, like, like I said uh, earlier is, create, you know, create content that fits into one of those buckets and um, show show lots of high empathy because that's super important. Maybe one way to show some empathy is to, to, is to sign up for Bomb Bomb or some video email service that's similar to that. You've been know, like you've been thinking about doing it. You know you should do it. Uh, and just start firing off videos, right? Um, and I, you know, I, I, I know that there was uh, one person who fired off a, a video to one of my escrow officers and it was really short. It was just like, Hey, Chris, just want to check in, see how you're doing. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy times right now, but if you need anything, I'm here for you and just wanted you to know I'm around. Right. That, that was it. It was really short. This guy probably has a list of, I don't know, we'll just call it, you know, a hundred, 200 people. So he's cranking through, you know, 50 videos a day he's, he's done in a week. Right. Um, and they don't take that long. He could do it. I, it looked like he might've even been doing it on his phone and then just firing off, you know, an email from his phone. I don't know, but that's an example where, uh, you know, a bomb bomb is spelled B O M B B O M B. Um, that's an example of where, you know, you can use a tool, be empathetic, uh, just reach out. You don't, you don't have to necessarily pitch anything right now. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that tone of empathy is really good. What if you're trying to, um, you know, what if you're trying to, I guess, build your referrals or, you know, get some reviews, Ricardo and Scott, we've talked about this as being a really, you know, building trust assets, getting that reputation online. Uh, how, how can you go about trying to do some of that work right now? What would be like one or two things you would suggest people start doing during this time? So one of the things I always emphasize with people, and I feel like, I feel like reviews are thrown by the wayside and it's almost an afterthought. It's, 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 Oh, I'll just ask for it later. And if you're in that position where you're thinking, Oh, I'll just ask for it later, you're missing a huge opportunity. And then uh, I don't know if it was Scott or one of my other agents um, that basically said, the review, like you, the asking for the re review doesn't happen at the end of a transaction. Asking, yeah, so. asking for the review, you kind of set that tone and that stage early on at the beginning before you even have a listing contract or whatever, because you're setting the tone and expectation that Dustin, I know that my team is going to deliver above and beyond. So at the end of this transaction, can I count on you to leave us a five star review on Zillow or to leave us a five star review on Google My Business? Interesting. And it's, it's, um, if you, there's a series of, of phenomenal books with a lot of these phrases. Um, Scott, I don't know if, again, was that phrase from you? Can I count on you? Five powerful words. Yeah, that was from, uh, uh, Carl White. That was our, one of our coaches. So he, he uses that all the time. But listen, if you hear anybody that needs anything, can I count on you to send them my name? Yeah. And I think that's a really cool, that's a really cool way to get in there. And so the, the email that we send um, that, that I set up as a template once a transaction closes is, is simple. I'll just read it to you guys and I'll leave it in the show notes. But it's, you know, thank you. Can you do us a favor? And it's, hey, Ricardo, thank you for letting us represent you on your recent real estate transaction. Um, we ask all of our clients who want to give us a public testimonial to please leave us a review on either Zillow or Google My Business. Here are the quick steps to follow. It'll take less than two minutes. And then you have to lay out the steps to make it super simple, but also spoon feed them what you want them to say. So I say, step one, click on the link to leave us a review. You can search, uh, you can scan other reviews to see what previous customers have said about us. If you're thinking about what to write about, many of our clients who've read the reviews have told us these are the following characteristics that have been useful to them. They chose us because we had five-star reviews across the board. 
They chose they chose us to represent them because of our experience and our experience and accessibility. Um, was there something in particular that we did that you appreciated? Was it our knowledge and expertise over the local market area? Was it our patience, communication, and education throughout the process? And then the last one is, would you work with us again? Thank you in advance for taking a moment to leave a review and help us spread the word about our business. Sincerely, like your name and an email signature. And, and that's just something that you can do, like, again, just by default and, um, and automate. If you don't have any reviews right now, like, what I tell my reps, I have one rep who has 84 or more five-star reviews on his Google My Business. Um, and, and again, it's just reemphasizing that fact. We live in a five-star review culture. You know, what if, if you don't have any right now, don't like, could you send 10 emails right now? Uh, I bet if you sent 10 emails a day asking for a review, you might get one or two back. Well, here, here's another thing also that I, that, I, I do with reviews is you don't have to, you don't have to finish a transaction to ask for a review. So on my website, find my way home. I answer questions for people all the time. I mean, every single day I get half a dozen questions. Um, I ask people to leave me reviews if I was able to help answer their question, right? Because think about it. If a consumer is going online, what's going to be more powerful is if they see a bunch of reviews that say, yeah, he didn't even do the transaction for me, but he spent 15, 20 minutes on the phone and answered all of my questions. Mm -hmm. When I'm ready, that's the first place I'm going. And seeing that you're helpful and that you're willing to put yourself out there and get feedback on the fact that I didn't close business with this person, but they took the time to help me. That's a super, super powerful message that I don't think people focus on in their, in their testimonials. Everybody wants a testimonial of a closed transaction. I want a testimonial on the experience, on the relationship, on the very phone call, the very first time they contacted me. And I, I think that's super powerful. And I think you if you start thinking along those ways, like if you have a conversation with somebody and you know they're not going to list right now, just say, you know what? There's a ton of people out there. This conversation, would you mind leaving some nice words on my Google page so that they know I'm a professional or whatever the case is? And, and most people, oh, yeah, absolutely. Because at the highest point of motivation right there, because you just solved their problem and you know you're not going to do business with them. Grab that review. Grab that review. Ask for it. They'll give it to you. So we, we do it a little bit differently at Lighthouse. Um, we, we do have the request for review in the email signature line where everybody ignores it. But <laughs> <what we've, laughs> all right, let's just get real about how that works. But um, we also have a really cool tool that we're using called EvaBot. Uh, it's evabot.ai, I believe, is the uh, is the domain. And what EvaBot does is it, we can send a link out. We say, hey, we're going to give you a closing gift. Thank you so much for working with us. We send this out normally right after the escrow closes or like right before, like maybe a few days before it's going to close. Really appreciate you working with us. Uh, and, you know, you have your choice of a lot of escrow companies. We appreciate you choosing Lighthouse. We'd like to get you just a little closing gift as a way of saying thank you. So we send this out to the buyer or the seller. Um, and... Um, when the, when the gift goes out, there's this fun interactive process that the buyer and seller have where they get to kind of give the, the, the company a sense of the kinds of stuff that they're into, and then they receive a small gift. And when they receive the gift, the e there's an email that immediately follows that EvaBot sends and says, hey, you know, we saw that you got your gift. Hope you really enjoy it. By the way, if you enjoyed your experience with Lighthouse, do you mind clicking here to leave a review? Um, and we have gotten tremendous response rate out of those reviews. Now it's not perfect. I, I I wish it went straight to our Google page, but instead EvaBot decides to capture it on their own page. And I'm kind of pushing the CEO to change that up a little bit. But even still, like I'm able to see those reviews. I see it on a per escrow officer basis. And then we're able to publish those reviews to social media, right? So what we do is we we take those reviews, um, we we use some sort of you know tool to just uh, put them on top of our our own backgrounds, right? And then we just publish them to social media once, twice a week and just, you know, say, hey, we're super proud of, you know, Maria or Chris or Angela. Look at this review that they just got, right? Um, and it reinforces in people's minds this idea that, hey, you know, uh, Lighthouse is out there doing stuff and people seem to be really satisfied with it. Um, but regardless of how you choose to do it, trying to capture those reviews is really good. And by the way, um, 
you know, if you're thinking, well, I'm not doing any deals, I'm not really helping anybody right now. Uh, there's no good way for me to capture those reviews. EvaBot is doing something really fun right now. They have a package that you can send to consumers in a box that's, that has your brand on it, and it will give them a mask and hand sanitizer. And I think oh wow, like that, yeah. So you can go to EvaBot right now, sign up, and uh, you know, send gift boxes to the last I don't know however many people last two years worth of clients that you had. Uh, or go all the way back seven years because, you know, five to seven years, people start thinking about selling their house might be a really great time to land a box on their doorstep. It's like, hey, I was just thinking about you. Uh, hope these you know resources are good for you as you're going out grocery shopping or doing things on a day to day basis. Right. Um, and when, of course, EvaBot will ask him for a review when that box lands and they'll be like, oh, man, I loved working with Ricardo when he sold my home for me. And that guy was awesome. He's the best. You should really use him, right? And then you can start publishing those reviews to social media. So check out EvaBot. That might be a great way to start collecting some reviews early. Um, we're coming up on 40 minutes. Is there anything you guys feel like, you know, as, as uh, people are working on their business during this COVID crisis, is there anything you feel like we should have said that we haven't said? Any last bits or tips that you think need to be out there? Uh, well, one thing I wanted to, one thing I want to mention, um, those of you that don't, anybody that doesn't know Mike Price or Jay Thompson, um, brilliant people in the real estate industry forever. Uh, Mike has offered to post that link to the interview that he did with Jay regarding uh, reviews. We should definitely get that uh, from him because that's, that, I'm sure that's amazing. Uh and the, and the Eva bot is cool. So one of the things that I'm doing real quick, and, and we've kind of we've kind of touched on this, um, but this really is the time to make human connections and do wellness checks on everybody. Um, this whole the the there is a really unique opportunity for us to have conversations with not only our our business and referral partners, but also our clients um, about folks losing their their, their jobs or, or, or taking forbearance, right? The government really put us in a bad situation by blasting out there that people can stop making payments and they don't have to prove hardship. That's going to cause a problem for a lot of people in the future. They don't understand what they're opting into. They don't understand how they're going to get out of it. And a really, really valuable conversation to be having with people, especially your past clients. And it's not calling them, hey, um, you know, are you going to, are you know, are you going to do, a, are, are you doing a forbearance or did you lose your job? Just say, hey, I'm checking in on everybody. I know the news has been talking about forbearance. If you have any questions about what that means or if it's the right decision for you, just reach out and let me know. You know, like if you're leaving a, a, a message, heck, you could almost leave a, drop a ringless voicemail on your past client database and start getting inbound calls. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we've talked about it before, but I built a resource for banksreport.com and it's just a, um, I curated all of the, um, all of the Q and A's, everything you would ever want to know about forbearance. We link to all the servicers and how they're treating it. Um, it's a generic, uh, it's a generic resource. Anybody can grab it and use it and send it out to their clients and use it as a conversation starter. But that's another thing because that's really that's timely and relevant. And um, I, I just I see it causing a lot of confusion and a lot of challenges in the next probably three to 18 months as people try to figure out how to unravel um, what they got themselves into. So that's a very timely and relevant conversation that you can have with people while you're doing wellness checks. Just wanted to see how you are. By the way, you've probably heard about this. Um, I want to talk to you about it if you, if you're, if you have questions. How about you, Ricardo? How about how about me? What? <laughs> Is there anything you feel like uh, needs to be said? Any any final pieces of advice as people are spending these next few weeks working on their business from home? No, no it's just um, it's just look for those people that are doing well in your business. Uh, we we hired some new sales reps, for example, um, and I've been interviewing other sort of top producing sales reps in different markets. It's look at who is a leader in your market or look at who are leaders that whose business you would want to model. What is it that they're doing? Well, um, I would say try to deconstruct what it is that they're doing well 
and um, r- rinse and repeat, right? So look for leaders that are executing a strategy really well. Um, look at your own sort of business, do a self audit, and then um, figure out what your superpower is. Scott, you've talked about that uh, before, but you know what are you good at? And then start to build a strategy for yourself, modeling those who are successful. Um, I think now's the time. Now's the time to to kind of do it. it. And I would say also reach out to these people. Um, I've been doing a lot of one-on-one Zoom calls with people that I've that I I don't know that well. I kind of know, um, but I, I I you know I put it out there and and I say hey if you want to talk about anything, um, let's chat. And and I'll be honest, I put it out there because I am fairly tech savvy and I do some, I do some things. I'm pretty good at some stuff. And so I put it out there. If anybody wants to talk about the stuff I'm good at, um, I'm happy to share everything I know. And, and I'll be honest with you. I almost always get more out of the conversation than what I think I give, right? Because you're just having conversations with something you're, you're hearing about their issues. You're hearing about their challenges. You're hearing about their great ideas. Um, this is just a really, really good time to leverage karma. You know, push as much good karma out there as you possibly can, um, because people need it. Need it. The world needs it, and uh, and it's going to come back to you so many times over um, if you do it right. Um, and that's a, that, that's the important thing that everybody needs to understand that's listening to this um, or any of our podcasts. This is not a broken system. We purposely flip the switch and shut off the economy, and we're going to purposely turn the economy back on, and we have $6 trillion behind it to make sure that the economy gets started. This is not a hardship. This is a temp. This is a blip, and we're going to get back to normal. We don't know if it's going to be three months or 30 months, but we are going to get back to normal, and it's going to probably happen faster than anybody expects. So don't assume that on the other side of this, as quickly as this got shut down, it could get turned back on, at least a large percentage of it. So get yourself in a position to, to be prepared for that. This is no time to move. Yeah, so so my, my last piece of advice then, my parting shot here, piggybacks off of what Scott just said, um, but in maybe a slightly different way. So the economy is going to relaunch, and uh, there's going to be huge opportunity for people who are taking the time right now to position themselves to capture it. Here's what I want to say to everybody who's listening to this podcast and they're not excited. (laughs) You need to examine why. Okay. Because now is a really good time for you to get real with yourself about whether or not you belong in this industry. And I don't mean to sound like a jerk and I don't mean to have like a down note on this, but right now optimists are seeing potential. People who love what they do are seeing potential, right? You heard Scott, you heard Ricardo, you're hearing me. Um, and you could talk to guys. I'm sure I haven't talked to Mike, but I can already tell he's one of those guys, right? Who just sees potential. There are a lot of people here who are in this industry that we're talking to who are just excited. And if you're not, if you're like, man, this, this always sucked. And now it sucks. Infinitely <laughs> worse. And there are plenty of, man, there are plenty of, there are plenty of people like that in the industry. No shame. You know what? A lot of us end up here for whatever reason in life. Now is a really, really great time for you to say, you know what? Like, I, this just isn't doing it for me. And the prospect of it coming back to life isn't exciting at all. Maybe I'm in the wrong place, right? Maybe, maybe now is a time for you to do that self audit and determine whether or not you need to pivot. Okay. Uh, so that would be my advice. If you're not fired up right now, if you're not looking down the road at the potential, if you're not excited by what you could be doing, if you're not even remotely interested in trying to figure out how to implement any of these kinds of solutions, Man, figure out what you would be excited to do. Figure out what you'd be interested in. Maybe pivot to that. Uh, If you are, on the other hand, really excited about wanting to capture more business and you found this conversation to be engaging, I do invite you to check out uh, our other episodes at marketingtrench.fm. Marketingtrench.fm is the home of previous episodes and other content we have. You can also find us on your favorite podcast uh, player, uh, whether that be Overcast, Apple, Pocket Cast, or wherever you listen. Also, we invite you to check out our sister podcast in the Real Disrupt Collaborative. You can find those at realdisrupt.com. Realdisrupt.com is the home of other great Real Disrupt pl- uh, Collaborative podcasts. We're excited to be founding members of that awesome group put together by Jason Frazier. So check them out as well. Uh, we would appreciate it if you leave us some reviews on your favorite podcast. Uh, five stars, write some words. 
Uh, we just talked about the importance of reviews. That really helps us grow our podcast. We appreciate it. And of course, if you found this video conversation to be interesting, do share it on your social media. Spread the word. Um, check out our uh, Facebook page, Marketing Trench Facebook group. We've actually, just this week, my team posted uh, a guide that we put together to help you host great video meetings. Uh, this isn't a how to use Zoom guide. Um, Google exists figure out how to use Google to figure out how to do Zoom meetings. But if you're like, hey man, how do cameras work? Like how do I make my, myself look good with lighting and camera positioning and all that? That's what the guide's for. We've posted it there. Scott and Ricardo were also regularly posting amazing links to really good stories, great stuff happening. That's the Marketing Trench Facebook group. Until next time, this has been the Marketing Trench Podcast. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> now we're officially over. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.